thousand different versions of the ordinances that exist today and the one thing I would like to ask the city attorney for clarification since it's to this point is there any proper procedure or should we be taking an action that basically since we read it once assigned a number to it uh, is there any way we can just cancel that out since we're basically starting over from square one the way to cancel that out uh, officially would be to bring that ordinance back for a second reading and vote it down. And then you could propose a new ordinance under a new number if it has significant differences from that ordinance. Our, uh, also in that same uh, vein in the email uh, I, I admire the uh, approach that uh, was taken by the chair of the planning commission uh, is is this going to be something that we need to decide if, if this is how we're going to be accepting ordinances at this table or are they going to automatically go to the city attorney and then be presented at the table or What's going to happen? I'm not sure, but I believe I read somewhere from uh, the chairperson that the ordinances would be would not be written in uh, ordinance form. It just basically would be the comments and the, well, and the way they I read would be the given to changes. the city attorney, and we would we would look it over and then uh, with recommendations and give it to the city attorney to put it in ordinance form. That was my understanding. So, I mean, what we have now, I'm not sure. I may be totally off base, and uh, Mr. Weaver, maybe you can correct me. Is there that much difference between uh, the ordinance that we first started with and the changes that you made? Is there any reason why we can't keep the same ordinance number and, and just read? I don't know how we want to do that. <laughs> I've not actually. What would your recommendation? I've not actually been asked to look at the two side by side, but I have looked through both of the new one and the one, of course, that I worked on. I don't think there are that many significant differences, but I, if someone else feels there is, uh, I, I don't think there are that many differences. Uh, what could be changed could be changed simply by motion at the table, I think. But. To adopt uh, the the uh, ordinance number or revised ordinance dated 513, which is a, your ordinance uh, as amended, and mm -hmm. put it on second reading? I think that could be done, yes. Now, we can always read through it if that's what the council wants to do. Yes, sir. It's, it's just confusing because in her email she talks about the changes in red, the corrections in blue, and, and it's a little tough whenever you have a black and white laser printer to uh, to determine what they're even talking about. If the council wishes to defer it uh, to the next meeting, I'll be glad to go back through it and read them side by side and look and see if I can see any significance. But I, as I said, I haven't been asked to do that, but from looking at it, I don't really think there are terribly uh, major changes. Most of them appear to be minor that I saw on my cursory look through. I would move to defer the second reading of ordinance number 2135 to our next meeting. I'll second that. Any further discussions on that motion? Yes, sir. Is, is that proper since she's saying in the email that it is going back to planning for more work? Well, you could also defer it until you receive something from planning if you wish to do that. Uh, I, you can, it was on this table. This table can act on it if they wish, or if you wish to wait and see what they may propose further, the table certainly could do that. Mr. DeVito? Well, if we don't have it by the next meeting, we can defer it again until the subsequent meeting. I think the question that Mr. Pinnell had was whether or not we want to wait and see if there's anything from the planning or if we want to go ahead and have city attorney look at these two items. 
If I may weigh in, because I was there, it's not ready yet. There's still work. So they're to still be done. working on this Correct. ordinance. All right. So, uh, what was your the motion to, 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 to deferred defer it? until the next meeting? Okay. Any further discussion? I second it. Oh, sorry. All right. All those in favor of deferring this to the next meeting, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, that's. Okay. I guess that still leaves it up to you. Did you vote? Yes. I said aye. Aye. Uh, I'll vote aye to defer it. So. You had 3 2. 4 2. 4 is the mayor pro Mr. tem. Vote. Pro Tim does not lose his vote by virtue of taking that seat. Thank you. All right. Uh, next order of business is the uh, operation manual for finance department. Move to discuss. Second. All right. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I received an email from Legislative Audit, and they wanted to go ahead and send that disaster plan to another agency to make sure that it meets the state requirements. So that's where we are on that. And as soon as I get um, clearance on it, then I'll get that added into the policy manual and then distribute that to you all um, in your mailboxes. Okay. I'd like to see what you have done to date, if possible. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and um, add some paragraph in there, putting in the disaster plan a little bit, referencing it to it, and then I'll put it in a draft form oh, and put it in your mailboxes. Very good. Thank you. Can you email that to us? Uh, yeah. Okay. If you'd rather have it. That'd be fine. Either way. Is, is that a requirement of the, the daily operation of the operations manual? It's, it seems like, you know, this, this has been in the code for five and a half years, and if we don't have an operations manual on how the finance department is working, I, I don't see, see where a uh, disaster plan meets the need for, are we just waiting on everything else because that's part of the daily operation? That is part of the daily operations, is okay. the, the backup of the accounting system. I'd move to uh, postpone this discussion until next meeting. Second. Right. I should have something, I think, within the next two, Great. two weeks. Great. Okay. Uh, I have a motion to defer this to the next meeting. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Next meeting. Uh, motion for discussion on the new accounting software. Move to discuss. Have a second. Second. Yes, ma'am. Um, our city clerk has undertaken a survey of cities in Arkansas and asked them what kind of accounting programs they use. And it seems that several use this is a program called Centerpoint. A few use one called ENCODE. There's Sage Fundware, Sage Peachtree, QuickBooks, um, Intuit. Uh, I have... FOIA year end budget reports, year end balance sheets for the past several years. And when I go through these documents with my calculator, I find that not a single one of them balance. I'm not clear why this is, and I would, I would presume that at the, the balance sheet of the, at the end of each year when they were printed originally must have balanced or surely we would have heard something about it. But fact remains that all these balance sheets all the way back to 2005 no longer add up if they did in fact in the beginning. So it, it appears to me that there must be a problem with the software program we're using right now. Either 
there's a problem inherent in the system or somebody's been changing the numbers. So I think it would be a good idea for us to uh, look into getting a new software system that can't be manipulated or that doesn't have an inherent problem. And that's my concern. Mr. Vita? Well, her concern is not shared by the state auditor. Uh, there's been no flags by the state auditor uh, on all the audits that she's mentioned. Uh, just because it's the end of the year doesn't mean things are going to balance. That's what we just went through here recently, which was reconciling the budget uh, into the next year. So, you know, depending on where you take a snapshot of the budget, you're going to find uh, differences. Uh, I would defer, no, no offense to the esteemed council person, but I will defer to the state auditor as to raising any flags on what the city of Eureka Springs is doing with their money and as yet there have been no flags from the state auditor so I'm not going to be yelling fire on this one. To me it's a huge red flag when the balance sheets don't balance for the past many years. Perhaps the state auditor isn't looking at past years. Perhaps he's focused on a certain year. But to me, when the balance sheets for several years don't add up, there's a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, Move to postpone this discussion to the next meeting if nobody wants to take any action right now. Give them a little time to think about it. Move to postpone this discussion till the next meeting. Second. All in favor of postponing it to the next meeting? Aye. Aye. Is that uh, four? All opposed? No. Okay, four, one. Uh, to move this to the next meeting. Uh, Black Bass Dam update's been post deferred. Uh, Mr. Pinnell, would you like to bring us up to date on the, uh, the dog control workshop? To, to update we've had two workshops where we've just basically listened to the concerns of the citizens which uh, are valid points uh, we've done some research on different things that could hopefully be done uh, to assist in making the, the streets a little safer uh, I think I read in the paper this week that there was only two incidences of loose dogs. Uh, one, one of my concerns is um, that we, we've, we've set now for two meetings, two workshops, and I, I brought this up at the end of the workshop that we need to start moving forward. I talked <coughs> to uh, Jimmy Evans who uh, for whatever reason was not able to attend the second workshop and his his point to me and Melissa Green was there at the time uh, that we were discussing this is that he does not want us to overreact it's, it's kind of like the approach that Mr. Morris stated on the, the pop-off valves uh, I, I think a lot of the the concern being enforcement, which Jimmy is doing an admirable job, and I don't know how far we really need to go in changing the ordinance. I know it's going to roll in with required changes depending on how we approach the chapter with the file, uh, because the way it was written, it left out all the other animals that... Uh, we could have in the city if, if we had gone forward with the one that we read and that's why I expressed a concern on the reading of the of the the first reading of the foul ordinance and uh, to basically instead of sitting there spinning our wheels in a workshop uh, start at the beginning and go to the end and say this is what needs to be changed and bring it to the table and uh, an, an interesting thing that uh, and I don't know how 
the, the verbiage is. Uh, I know one of the recommendations that, that I had made uh, was in having, and I, and I wish I could have attended the uh, annual meeting of the Humane Society tonight, uh, because I'd asked the office manager out at Good Shepherd to bring up the fact of could they assist us in licensing animals and the, the concern that was brought to the table with that recommendation was can we have some entity that's not only outside of the city, uh, is not a city entity handling city money. Along with that, after, after that was brought up by our city clerk, uh, one of the recommendations was, and after in talking with Ruth, and I did, I'm sorry I don't know her last name, who's the Where? current uh, office manager out there, they get no city funding, they get no county funding, funding. everything is strictly private donations. Uh, I don't know if they've gotten or ever applied for grants. Uh, but one of, one of the things is possibly taking whatever fee we end up setting in the licensing, and we're looking at several things, and I don't think you want me to get into all the recommend changes that we're, we're looking at. But if, if, and this would be directed at the city attorney, I guess, if we look at working out where they can license adopted pets, whether they collect money or we write into the ordinance that for all we're concerned, it helps fund them, uh, that all they do is get the tags and turn in the information and they keep the money. Uh, but if they don't or can't, uh, is there a problem with them having the tags and then turning over money on a regular basis to the city? As an outside agency, that would be a problem. But if they just had the tags and they kept the money, we allowed them to keep the money, then it wouldn't You would be have broken. to contract with them for some service in order to that, for them to receive the money. But for accounting purposes, it still should be through the city. And one other thing we need to look at at the next workshop, uh, there was a Senate bill that was signed by the governor on April the 1st that requires all animals held by any pound, shelter, humane organization, or animal rescue group. And I don't know if that would end up being ones that <coughs> Mr. Evans is able to turn over to them. That may be something that might need to be looked at is required that they are sterilized once they are turned over to those groups. So if somebody's prized stud pit bull gets picked up and he's turned over for lack of a better place to put him, turned over to the Humane Society before he could be released, I haven't seen any of the lengthy writing of the bill, but the synopsis <coughs> requires animals that are held to be sterilized or to turn back over to the owners or adopted. So that's basically where we're at. We've made no, I hate to say it this way, we've made no progress in changing the, the ordinance at this time. I, I hope, uh, that as a member sitting in that, ordin in that uh, workshop, that I think by next, our next workshop, we'll probably start seeing some progress with, uh, as Mr. Canal said, <coughs> taking the ordinance and, and getting it. Uh, tweaked uh, to something we can bring back to the table. So, thank you. Any further discussion, comments, questions? Uh, all right, next item is... Uh, beg your pardon? Can we postpone so we can keep it on the table? For the dog workshop? Yes. Uh, Yeah, when somebody wants to, uh, Mr. Fernow, would you like to defer that, uh, or just we want to wait and, and bring it up? I mean, at a later date when we get all done. 
Do they have any reason to keep it on the agenda? I personally like the idea of leaving anything that's being worked on on the agenda, whether it's discussed or not. Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be brought up every time, but you know. I would move to postpone this until our next meeting. James, James. Um, I had the floor. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not an ordinance. Uh, it's an issue that we can bring up any time. I mean, we don't have to defer it. We can bring it back to the table whenever we want. So there's no jeopardy of it disappearing. I mean, just, uh, I, you know, I, I'd feel fine in, in taking no action on it because it is just mention of a workshop. All right. We do have the, go ahead and I'll recognize your motion. Move to postpone this issue until next meeting. All right. You want a second? Any second second? that. All right, we got a motion to uh, defer it to the next meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the no's. All right, pass. Uh, land bank ordinance. Uh, we have... Uh, <coughs> I think we have an ordinance. No. No. This today. All right. Uh. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see. Make sure. I got this. Do I have a motion to uh, discuss? Motion to discuss the ordinance for line bank. Say again. All right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? All right. Uh, we have the uh, director of uh, parks here. Would you like to say something on this before we we get into it? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Council. Uh, the one uh, concern I had about the ordinance as it's written is it did not, to me, make clear if any of uh, the vacated streets, the streets that are to be vacated, if the proceeds from that would be included in the land bank. In our original outline, we had uh, some uh, verbiage to that effect, and I'm not sure if that is included in here, at least to, to my clarity. So I guess that's a question for, for Tim. Basically, the way this ordinance is written, if it is, was adopted, is you would have to bring the proposed sales before the council, and the council would put them in. And for, certainly, if uh, there was to be vacated streets uh, sold, that would be the council's option to do that. The option to put it in the land bank? Yes. As opposed to normally. As mandating, as opposed to mandating. It does not mandate it. So could we include that language, that vacated streets proceeds from? You certainly could do that. Uh, the council has in the past expressed a desire not to uh, Pass their control necessarily. Pass their control over over public property within the city. Each of these sales is going to have to come before the council mm -hmm. each time. Mm -hmm. Correct. And even if you mandated it, they could change that at a particular authorization. So there'd be no difference between fee simple property and. Uh, right of ways. That's correct. Because the right of ways are, they're not really right of ways. They are fee simple in the old historic parts of town. I see. So when, when we bring, when the land bank committee brings forth uh, a piece of property that is to be sold, or if a person comes in and they are desiring to have a, a piece of property vacated, then it comes to the council. The council, by ordinance, has to charge a minimum of two hundred dollars per lot. Yeah. So then there is one more step to place that the proceeds of that sale into the land bank. That's correct. Okay. 
buy this ordinance. Basically what this ordinance does is sets up a place to put that money and designates a committee to decide what pieces fall into what category. It does not designate and say where the money goes. I would come at that point of sale when it comes before the council for the council to determine whether they want to put it into the land bank fund or into the general fund. That's correct. The council could decide not to place it into a particular fund, being the, the particular fund being the land bank. It could choose that it needed to go elsewhere. And it really, what I'm hearing you say is it really doesn't matter whether we write in here that it does go into that money sold from here and received from here going directly into the land bank fund, the council still has the option of changing it. Because the council is still going to write an ordinance that could supersede at any point whatever is in this. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's not clear to me from reading this where exactly the land bank fund would be located, whether it would be in the general fund or under the parks fund. I think, yes. Yvonne, you want to address this? Um, this afternoon I sent you all some changes that I felt needed to be included on the ordinance, and um, Tim had taken that those items and had put it into the new ordinance that you have right now. And in there, the money, as is designated as the land bank, will be the five thousand dollars would come out of general fund capital into the land bank to set up that account. Where would the land bank account be set? In in the general fund, or under the parks? in the capital? In, in the fund capital 12, fund. In fund twelve, under the general capital, there'll be there'll be a sub. Uh, there'll be a listing of the bank account on the bank. So what's fund 12? That's the general fund capital fund. General there are, fund yeah. capital fund. There are several funds, or there are several accounts set up into, um, that are set up in the capital fund. Um, your skate park um, accounts, the community center fund, um, those kind of items are general fund capital monies. <clears throat> so I sent those um, changes, and it just had to do with taking it from establishing line items in the budget to actually just the bank account, because that's what we're talking about is setting up the bank account, and that's what the, all the changes were that I gave you in the ordinance. So the, so the land bank fund itself, it would not be a separate drawer, if you will, of the parks. No, then. Fund. It's in it's city, the city bank accounts. Okay. It'll be with the city bank accounts, and you have control over that account uh, by ordinance or resolution. Ms. Charles, since we've just received this new uh, proposed ordinance, and I haven't really had a chance to look at it in depth yet, I would move to postpone this issue until next meeting. We did have, Mr. Now you had your hand up also. I, I think Yvonne answered the question. I was wanting to make sure that uh, however it's set up that it's in a separate, distinguishable, can't be done for anything else type account. And I, in that section that I think ties in with the email we got, um, I'm assuming that, that clarifies it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, we have a motion on the floor. Oh, we don't have a second. We have a second. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's any questions before we go to the second. And, and I'm waiting to hear the second also. All right. Uh, okay, any discussion on deferring this to the next meeting? Yes, sir. All right, all those in favor of deferring this to the next meeting, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so moved. Thank you. Uh, and number nine, our uh, 
Y'all have trash bags committee. Miss Balance and Mr. Powell for now. Move to discuss. I have a motion to uh, discuss. I have a second. Second for purposes of discussion. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the interest of setting up a ye yellow trash bag committee, I'd like to discuss that. Uh, how should we proceed? Uh, you know, if you want to set up, that's what we're talking about, setting up a committee. And